tell friends and funky play brothers and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube. And today is part nine of an original novel, Piggy the Cured, by Terrace Crawford Scholastic, hashtag seven, final part of chapter three. And we left off with them finding all the apples they needed. Uh, ben let out a sigh of relief, followed by a light laugh. Part of him couldn't believe that they had got, done it, and they had successfully taken on the grocery store, and were now one step closer to a cure. One step closer to normally see, to setting everything right. Ben raised a single finger to his lips, this universal symbol for silence. They pointed urgently to the front entrance of the grocery store. They could make a quick exit from here. They find a place to check the map and wait in it out until morning. The four deserved some rest. They bake backed away slowly, each keeping their eyes fixed on the sleeping boar in front of them. Ben was especially careful, sweat beating down his brow as he took several careful measured steps backward. He and his friends snuck past the creature toward the front door. Don went door whisked open. The cool early morning air kissed Ben's face as he took deeper and deeper gulps of early morning air. He didn't realize how much he had missed fresh air. A loud clattering sound drew his attention back inside the grocery store. A red streak smeared across the white tile floor, and Billy was on his back. His barbell rolling across the floor, it wasn't hard to figure out what must have have happened in his attempt to sneak backward out of the grocery store. It seemed as though Billy had stepped on one of the rotten apples discarded by discarded by Ollie and slipped, dropping his main zombie deterrent in the process. The barbell kept rolling, coming to an eventual stop at the bottom of the heap of apples. With a slight tap to the structure collapsed, the sleeping boar suddenly stalled to alertness. The infected creature's eyes red eyes shot open as confused as anyone being suddenly woken from a nap. Run, Bella, Ben all Ben cried out, waving his friends to the exit. Ollie and Badgie broke into a sprint, making their way toward the exit. Billy scrambled, clearly unwilling to leave his beloved weight behind, stopped Short of an ex the exit, Ollie pulled the white key from his pocket and shoved it into the security panel by the door. His palms were sweaty, making the key hard to grip. But after a few minutes, the mechanism, the mechanism, a picture of the weird looking boar chef. Weird looking boar chef. Gave way, dropping another security gate from the ceiling. The metal gate clanged around the confused creature who roared loudly for a moment before turning around and promptly resuming his nap. We should get out of here, Ollie cautioned. We can't, we can work only, only one security gate at a time. Ollie trailed off, but when, but Ben knew what. He met by trapped the sleeping infected. They had let out the horde of other zombified creatures. Their surprise, super, su surprise, suspicions were confirmed when the sound of growling began to echo throughout the store. Billy grabbed his barbell, strapped it onto his back, and ran toward the exit. Badger was not far behind him, and all he brought up the rear opening to leave a key leave the key behind it was no further use to them now badgy ollie billy fled the grocery store but the automatic doors did not whisk shut behind them ben stood in the doorway eyes transfixed on something in the middle distance just in front of the army of zombies barreling down on ben with a tattered pack of cardboard and plastic and inside batteries Ben fixated on the pack of batteries, his mind only on one thing. The taser stuffed into the officer's backpack, its charge long 
since the pleated Ben's fingers reached out reflectively as if the plastic zombie deterrent was were already in his hand. He didn't have ability, raw strength, all these quickness or bad use, underhanded cunning. Without a weapon to fend off the virus-ridden creatures, Ben was worse than than useless. He was a liba- liability. Ben licked his lips, feeling his tongue stick to his upper row of teeth. Then, then, that traded had set in long ago. Yet was no was also somehow the furthest thing from Ben's mind. The insignificance, insentient growling from the infected in the grocery infestation section grew louder as Ben started at at the batteries frozen in place with the paralyzing weight of in this action still no longer he weighed the closer the infected animals grew to gaining on him. Ben pushed a shirt to his feet to tile, booking it across the grocery store to the singular pack of batteries displayed on the shelf. The relief that Ben felt wrapped his fingers around the cardboard packing fell all way almost immediately as the infected animals rounded the corner. <coughs> corner, rabid hunger, and probably none too pleased at, at having been locked up in a cage. Ben shoved the batteries into his jacket pocket before turning to run. In fact, animals gave chase, swiping at Ben. As they followed, luckily for Ben, teamwork was not the infected creature's strong suit. Most of the virus infected boars could not stop tripping over one another. Of, of those that could, several had come to be distracted by the co- conveyor belt on which they had shambled out forever and not go anywhere. Half a dozen of the infected boars Still, boars still bore down on Ben, but he managed to duck away from them all, each coming closer at Ben the last. He was almost to the door's freedom just within his grasp, another loud roar startled Ben as he ran. One of the creatures was coming at him from across the aisle, and suddenly Ben swung the only object ate available to him, the plastic bag full of apples. The creature moved into its massive arms at the same time, swinging at Ben with oversized claws. The two objects met in midair, colliding in according with the draw of the laws of physics. The creature's clawed hand provided ferocious swiping through the plastic bag like a warm knife through soft butter. Ben's face fell, but it was too late. As the bag tore open, dozens of apples crashed to the floor, bouncing, spilling, and rolling across the tile and throughout the store. The apples that didn't split on contact with the ground suffered a much worse fate. Immediately, best beset upon by hungry infected jowls. Picture. Poor apples. And teeth flashed in the early morning sun as the infected descended upon the apples. The juicy, tart red fruits as the closest thing to a fresh meal that they had seen in a long while. They fed like they were ravenous, too, feasting on the skin down to the core, and then popping even that into their mouths. Part of Ben invited the creatures for their meal, but he couldn't remember a time that he had felt so crestfallen, so hopeless. Juice dripping down the creatures' chins as they turned toward Ben, second most appetizing morsel they had exposed to him the recent memory. Ben didn't even notice Billy and Badgie had pulled him back by the collar of his jacket, his hand still outstretched toward the puddle of bubbling juice, where their only hope for the cure had been just moments before.
And that's how chapter three ends. Uh, why did Ben have him? I thought Badgie had him, and that would have been way better because then he couldn't swing the bag of apples and lose all the apples for some batteries where he could have just gotten a different weapon, which wasn't a taser, and that would have been much easier. So, friends, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Twitter at the Funky Play Bros, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at the Funky Play Brothers. Support our vlog at Cash App with the dollar sign Funky Play Brothers. So, yeah, more unboxings, more taste tests, more adventures, more monies, and support. Thanks for watching. Bye.